praises. I pray everyone's doing well. Uh, today is not going to be like any course you've ever heard. It's going to be the most controversial course ever you've ever heard because it's going to more than likely contradict everything you've watched on CNN, MSNBC, and have thought about the Bible. The reason I say thought about the Bible, the Torah, the Tanakh, is because the majority of our people have not fully read the Bible in its entirety. They've read bits and pieces, for example, John 3.16. I'm pretty sure most of us can quote that. Most of us don't know John 3.14. Most of us don't know Exodus 28. So what I'm going to take you through, I'm going to take you from the sixth day of creation all the way up until modern time. How much time do I have? Hour and 30 minutes. Okay. Well, I don't think I'll be able to do that. I think it's, I think it's actually just one. Yeah, it's oh, it's one hour. Okay. Yeah. Oh, one hour. Okay. okay. So what we're going to do the last, um, the last thirty minutes, we're going to open up for questions. Okay. So I'm going to start with. Let's go to uh, Deuteronomy, the twenty-eighth chapter. I'm going to start there. Okay. Um, before I go there, let me think where I want to start. Give me, uh, give me the dark age slide. I think I'm going to start there first. Let's come out of that. Yeah, I want to start here. Go down to the last slide. Go down, go down, go down. Move up, 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 up. I want this slide right here, right here. Uh, many of us are familiar with this, the Sistine Chapel, uh, creation painted by Michelangelo. Uh, it shows God, the angels, and Adam. This is in Rome. But what we're going to do is compare many of these images to what the Bible actually says. I want to start with Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7. And for those of you that don't have a Bible, we put the scriptures on the screen for you. This is the book of Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. So here we have an example of the soil of the earth, which is the dust of the ground. Go ahead and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Now the reason I wanted to start there is because there was a controversy, and still is a controversy, what was the race, ethnicity, or color of the first man ever created, Adam? The Bible says the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, which is the soil of the earth as we have here. Now when we go back and compare that with the Sistine Chapel, this is inaccurate. Adam could not have been a European, could not have been a Caucasian. We're going to discuss the angels now. Give me Ezekiel chapter 1 and verse 13. Go back to creation. You can stay right there. I'll stay there. You can stay right there. Ezekiel chapter 1, verse 13. We're going to compare what scripture says to what we see visually throughout the media in our churches, our synagogues, so forth, and in our schools. Read that. Ezekiel chapter 1 and verse 13. As for the likeness of the living creatures, the living creatures are the angels, their appearance was like burning coals of fire. Their appearance was like burning coals of fire. I don't know how many of you have had a cookout and used charcoal to start your grill. A coal is jet black. I'm going to say it again. A coal is jet black. Read it again. Ezekiel chapter 1 verse 13. As for the likeness of the living creatures, their appearance was like burning coals of fire. So again, totally inaccurate. Okay? Now, God Almighty, what does the Bible say about him? You often hear people say, God does not have a body, he's a puff of smoke. I've heard that in church growing up. Really, give me the book of Daniel, Chapter 7 and verse 9 about God Almighty. What does it say? This is the book of Daniel, chapter 7 and verse 9. We're going to compare it to this image that Michelangelo painted, which is very famous. Go ahead. I beheld till the thrones were cast down. So, I beheld till the thrones were cast down, meaning he saw a vision of the kingdoms of the earth being cast down, which means destroyed. Go ahead. And the Ancient of Days did sit. And the Ancient of Days did sit. Let's think about that. In order to sit, you have to have a what? You have to have a what? Is it a puff of smoke? What do you have to have in order for you to sit? Body. Body. 
Thank you. A body. You have to have a body. Read on. And the Ancient of Days did sit, whose garment was whose white. garment means clothes. Whose clothes was what? Was white as snow. In order to wear clothes, you have to have a what? A body. So once again, all through church, no, God doesn't have a body. He's just out there. Really? That's not what the Bible says. Right? And the hair of his head. Oh, he has a head. And he has hair on his head. I want to see if it's thin and straight. Right? And the hair of his head like the pure wool. Pure wool. How many of you know what pure wool hair is? Do you know? What is it? Kinky hair, your hair, your hair, okay? Kinky hair, your hair. What are we reading? The Bible. But the biblical images have never been portrayed to us. We've been seeing images like this all our lives, which is not substantiated in the biblical text. So we've been learning nothing but lies thus far. We're going to go on. Give me the next one. Uh, not that one. Go through this. Let me take a look. Let's go to God. Go, go. I want Jesus. I want Jesus. <laughs> so finally, Jesus. That's what I want. This is another famous painting. The Last Song, painted by Leonardo da Vinci. That's a, let me ask a question. The Last Supper was on Passover. Christ had the Passover meal with 12 apostles. What were they? Were they or men or women or mixed? The 12 apostles, what were they? Anybody know? They were all men. But when you look at this painting, most famous painting in the world, you see a woman here. You see a woman here. Okay. And the question is, well, who are they? Now, let me count, let me count. One, two, three, four, five, six. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12. So 10 of the 12 are men, 2 are female. Hmm. Again, that's problem number one. In the center, you have Jesus Christ. I want to challenge this painting here. I'm going to go to the book of Revelation, chapter 1. I'm going to go to the book of Revelation to see if anybody... Here's another thing people say. We go from various colleges. We were at this college last week. People say, nobody's seen Jesus. So I said, really? Nobody's seen Jesus Christ? So how did they nail him on the cross? Was he invisible running through Jerusalem? Then they say, uh, he's all colors. So he was a rainbow. Walking through Jerusalem as a rainbow. People come up with these justification. They justify their lies. Because it contradicts. The Bible will contradict what you're taught from youth up. Let's see, let's start at verse 12. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 1. Read verse 1. Verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. So the revelation of Jesus Christ, which means the revealing of Jesus Christ. Jump down to verse 12. Verse 12. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. Which is the menorah. Go ahead. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man. Remember, Christ was also called the Son of Man. I'm not going to go into that, but that deals with, <laughs> that's funny, that deals with the concept where people say he had no earthly father. They said, no, 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 he was immaculate. Then he was called the Son of Man. Hmm, okay, we'll deal with that another time, but read on. One like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot. So he had on a long garment. Go ahead. A girt about the past with a golden girdle. He had a golden girdle on. Now, what I want you all to also notice about these, the Bible describes the clothing of the Israelites. The clothing that you see in these paintings are Greek. These are many of them wearing togas. But most people don't think about that. Read on. Verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So, Jesus Christ, on the island of Patmos when he appeared to John, it said the hair of his head was white like wool. Here's the question. Is wool a color or a texture? Is wool a color or a texture? Wool. Thank you. 
Wool is a texture. It's not a color. We. Oui. His head and his hairs were white like wool, uh -huh. as white as snow. So it was fully white. Go ahead. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. Now, does that mean he was like Cyclops on the X-Men shooting fire beams out of his eyes? No. Let's read the prophecy about his eyes. Moses spoke about the coming Messiah. Read that. Genesis chapter 49 and verse 12. Uh -huh. His eyes shall be red with wine. His eyes shall be red with wine. Some churches or some religions say Christ now didn't drink wine. Christ's first miracle, he turned water into wine. wine. You mean he didn't take a sip? You better believe he did. <laughs> Let's go back. Revelation chapter 1 verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. And his feet like unto fine brass. What color is brass? Brown. What color is brass? Brown's brown. This is brown's brown. Wait, let me look. I might have some on my back. Hold on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yes, sir. Right here. This is brass here. It's brown. Read that part again. And his feet like unto fine brass. As if they burned in a furnace. He was so dark, he looked like he was burned in a furnace. Some of you dark skinned people here, you heard jokes before. God left you in the oven too long. You look, you're so black, you look like God left you in the oven so long. And all the kids will laugh at you. <laughs> well, that's how Jesus Christ was. I've heard a minister say, Well, brother, that's not literal. That is figurative. I said, Well, how odd then. That God described Jesus Christ figurative as a black man. So I asked the minister, can you give me a scripture where he's described as European? Please give me a scripture. You can hear silence. There's no scripture that describes Jesus Christ as European at all. So according to the Bible, not only did he have white woolly hair, his feet, which is the same color as the rest of your body, the feet is, uh, I assume everyone's feet is the same color as the rest of their body. It looked like he was burned in a furnace. Now give me Daniel 10. So this right here is totally wrong. Go ahead. This Daniel 10. This is the book of Daniel, chapter 10 and verse 5. The prophet Daniel saw a vision of Jesus Christ. Go ahead. Then I lifted up my eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose loins were girded with fine gold of Euphrates. It's the same description on the golden girdle. Go ahead. His body also was like the barrel. When you look up barrel, it means green. He had on a green garment. Go ahead. And his face as the appearance of lightning. He had power emanating from his face. And his eyes as lamps of fire. Because he drank wine. Read. And his arms. Now he looks at the arms of Jesus. The arms of him. He said his arms. Go ahead. And his feet. And his feet. Like in color. What's that word? Like in color. That's for the people that say color's not in the Bible. Oh, how wrong you are. Like in color to what? Polished brass. Polished brass. That's that brass burned in the furnace. Now, so where did these images come from? Give me the next slide. Go up, uh, up, raise, come up. Up, up, up. Stop right here. No, go down. Gotcha. I want this. Here's a, this is from a book entitled Russian Icons. Russian Icons. Put together by Father Vladimir Ivanov. V-L-A-D-I-M-I-R. Ivanov is I-V-A-N-O-F-F. -F. He took photographs. This is a photograph of all the black images throughout Europe. And he came to a conclusion that the original rulers, the Moors and all of them, were not Caucasian at all. He said all the images of Christ, the apostles, were all black prior to the Renaissance. What is this happening here? This is called iconoclasm, where they're destroying all the black images of the rulers throughout Russia, Europe, England, England Romania. I'm going to show you Romania in a moment. And they're repainting them white. It's called iconoclasm, destruction of art, religious art. Okay? And I like this one because in the background you see Jesus Christ right there in the back. But in the foreground you see what's happening here. Okay? A photograph. So nobody can say, y'all made that up. We didn't make this up. You can get the book. Okay, I was, I was, uh, give me a, give me a favor. Give me that book to Christians there. I was going through your little library here. The Christians, Christians. I wanted to see how, if your school had anything 
that was worthwhile. So I just took a gander through this book entitled The Christians by Bamber, how do you say that name? Uh, Gascogne, I guess. And I went to page, mm -hmm. bear with me a second, if I can find it again. Uh, is it page 119 or 122? Oh, here we go. These are the four tetrarchs. These were 40 European leaders. And in it, these are the Roman rulers throughout Europe. If you notice, the noses are broken off and the lips. Not by accident, but by design. Now, the book doesn't describe or explain why the noses were broken off and the lips broken off. Because generally, your nose and your lips will identify your ethnicity. Generally. Just like in Egypt, where Napoleon, he saw the Sphinx, he saw all those black images, he said, blow off the noses and the lips, destroy it. Now they found, uh, they did a finding with Nefertiti. I don't know how many of y'all said, she's European. Wow, she's European. Wow. And you, it was shocked as how many people believe all of that. In other words, we have no history. Religion. We have no history. Wow. Black history is very amazing to me because many times, especially elementary, junior high, high school, some colleges, black history goes as far back as Selma, Alabama with Martin Luther King, or we may discuss Malcolm X, Marcus Garvey. Who were we before the slave trade? Nobody talks about this. Nobody ever mentions the Bible. Now watch this. Give me Song of Solomon, chapter 1. Now before you read that, give me the next slide. Let me see something. Yeah, right here. Click this. That's it. There's a book called The Borges, written by Marion Johnson. Write that down. The Borges. B O R G I A S. The Borges, written by Marion Johnson. She says the, the Renaissance was the era of anti Christ, where art was on the rise and new images were created. Hence, you had Leonardo da Vinci, followed by Michelangelo, who was younger than him. Leonardo da Vinci was hired by Pope Alexander VI of Rome to paint the image of his son. Caesar Borgia as the Renaissance Jesus. The Renaissance Jesus, these are the sketches. This is what's been put throughout the world. This is what's on your Sistine Chapel. This is what's in some of your churches that your mothers and fathers pray to and have on their walls. These are not the biblical images of Jesus at all. Okay? Now, I'm going to read a scripture to you. Leviticus 13 and 30. I want to read that. Wait, give me the next slide. Let me see something. Next slide. Next slide. Go up, go up, go up. Go up, go up, go up, go up. Go up, go up, go up. Okay, come out of this. Go into the Deuteronomy 28. And I want around verse 64. Go down, go down, go down. Verse 64. I want the images of Jesus. Right there. Okay. This is Caesar Borgias. That's his actual painting. This is the book, the Borgias. Marion Johnson. This is the actual book. Your school may or may not have this. Here we have Christ with blonde hair. Blonde is a French word for what? Yellow. Yellow hair. What does the Bible say about yellow hair? I don't know. Let's see. Leviticus 13 and 30. Leviticus chapter... Because Jesus here has yellow hair in this one. Go ahead. Leviticus chapter 13 verse 30. Then the priest shall see the plague. And behold, if it be in sight deeper than the skin, and there be in it a yellow thin hair. Yellow thin hair, yellow straight hair, blonde straight hair. <coughs> then the priest shall pronounce him unclean. You're unclean. You're unclean. According to the Bible. Go ahead. It is a dry scalp, even a leprosy upon the head or beard. So then why do they have Jesus? portrayed with yellow thin hair. It's impossible. Just totally wrong. Totally wrong. Totally, totally. Many of us say we love God and we love the Bible. As we go through the scriptures, your faith, your faith will be tried. Do you really love the Bible? Do you love God? Now there's a Bible over there in case anybody wants to read along. I see it in the corner there. So I was looking at some of the scriptures in there to see if it, how accurate it was. Let's go to Song of Solomon now. King Solomon was the 
son of King David, of which Jesus Christ descended from. Let's leave off this. Go back to verse 1. Go all the way up. Go ahead. Song of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 1. Now again, there's a Bible there in case anybody wants to follow along. Because people say, ah, oh, I think they made that up. Mm. Okay, read that. The Song of Songs, which is Solomon. The Song of Songs, which is Solomon. Some people say Solomon didn't write that. A woman wrote the Song of Solomon. Hold on. I'm a proof that Song of Solomon was written by Solomon. First Kings chapter 4. I believe you got to start verse 30 to 32, I think. You know what I want? Yes, sir. First Kings chapter 4, was, where it mentions Solomon by name. Yes, sir. First Kings chapter 4 and verse 30. Okay. And Solomon's wisdom excelled the wisdom of all the children of the east country and all the wisdom of Egypt. For he was wiser than all men, than Ethan, the Ezrahite, and Haman, and Chalcol, and Darda, the sons of Mahol, and his fame was in all nations round about. And he spake three thousand proverbs, and his songs were a thousand and five. Solomon, Song of Solomon, Solomon wrote a thousand and five songs. A thousand and five songs. His songs were a thousand and five. So when we go back to the Song of Solomon, now we know who wrote it. First one again. Song of Solomon, chapter one, verse one. The Song of Songs. Which is Solomon. And it's funny we got to read that because verse 1 that we just read tells you who wrote it. But some people, as we found out, say no. A woman wrote that. <clears throat> verse 5 now. Verse 5. I am black, but comely, O ye daughters of Jerusalem, as the tents of Kedar, as the curtains of Solomon. King Solomon, king of Israel, the Jew, says I am black. The word comely means good looking. Handsome. So Solomon says he's black. Watch this. Give me Job 30. We've all heard about the prophet Job. Now, as I said, most of us have never read the Bible. When you really read the Bible, it's going to try your faith to see if you really believe it or not. Many bro brothers, I would say black men, some black men, especially in New York. I'm from New York. They always say, oh, I hate the Bible. I say, why? They say, because the Bible was written by the white man. I said, are you sure the Bible was written by a white man? They go, yes. We don't want to hear it. So then when I start to show them the scriptures, as I'm going through, they have to now have another viewpoint. It's, oh, I didn't know it was, I, I thought Jesus was white. I thought Solomon was white. I thought they were European. I said, no, you've had the wrong thought. Or just like I had the wrong thought. I grew up a Christian. I thought everybody was European, Caucasian. Read that. Job chapter 30, verse 30. My skin is black upon me. You know, I read this in church one day, and a minister said, hold on a minute, man. That means he felt bad. That's not talking about his color. Read it again. My skin. Read it again. Job chapter 30. No, just read that again. My skin. Read it again. My skin. Read it again. My skin. It says my skin. It's not saying my emotions. It's not saying how I feel deep in my heart. My skin. Go ahead. Is black upon me. My skin is black upon me. Wow. So, so far, Genesis 2 and 7, the first man, Adam, was made from the dust of the ground. Solomon said, I am black, but coming. Job says, my skin is black. Wow. Give me Lamentations chapter 4, verse 8, about the Jews. Hmm. Like I said, this is going to be the most controversial stuff you've ever heard. Because most of us have never read the Bible. Once you read the Bible, now you get challenged. Do you really believe in that book? Who's right? The Word of God, which was written over 3,000 years ago? Or CNN, MSNBC, CBS. Read that. Lamentations chapter 4 and verse 8. Their visage. The word visage, V-I-S-A-G-E, means their faces. Their faces, right? Is blacker than a coal. Blacker than a coal. We have five minutes? And the question. Okay. Okay. Well, let me rush out this. I'm going to go here now. I want, well, I'm going to, since I only got a short time, I just want key verses out of this. Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, I'm going to start at verse 15. People often ask, where do those religions come from? Where did Baptist religion come from? Pentecostal, Roman Catholic, because you can't substantiate any of those world religions in the Bible. We offer the minister the 100 bucks. Show us Roman Catholic in the Bible. 
Show us Seventh-day Adventists in the Bible. These are the religions that we're all in. It's not in there. Deuteronomy 28. Moses came out of Egypt with the 12 tribes of Israel. And this is what he said to them. Read Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day, that all of these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. When Moses went up on a mountain, God did not give him Seventh-day Adventists, Jehovah Witness, Muslim, Mormon, none of that. He gave the children of Israel commandments. So why, what do, how does religions fall in? Religions is what divides us. Religion, because for example, whatever slave master you had gave you his religion. We're going to show you that too. So now, we're going to describe and discuss some of the curses that came on the 12 tribes of Israel. Jump down to verse 32. Stay with me. Verse 32. Go ahead. This is a curse. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, and thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. And there shall be no might in thine hand. When it says another people here, it means another race. Your sons and daughters shall be given to another race. And your eyes shall look and fill with longing for them all the day long. And there shall be no might in thine hand. Meaning you would have no military might to unite your people. No economic might. No political might. Hmm. That does not fit what happened during World War II, because there are groups set up to hunt down war criminals. Y'all familiar with that? They have groups, I forgot the name of one particular group, that they have a Jewish group, but they hunt down German war criminals. So this says that the Israelites, and there shall be no might in your, in your hand. You have no power in the earth. This is a curse. Give me verse 37. Verse 37. And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all nations, whether the Lord shall lead thee. Whatever nation the Israelites would go into for breaking God's commandments, they would be known as proverbs and bywords. Let's look at some. Jump. I don't want this one. Since I'm short for time. Right here. Right here. These are proverbs and bywords. The term black that many of us go by. That's a byword. Because that's, this is what I'm about to say. All races are mentioned in the Bible, but you have to figure out what race is talking about who. Right now we're discussing the Israelites, the 12 tribes of Israel. It's said that the Israelites would become proverbs and bywords. I'm going to sum it up basic for you. It means you would lose your identity. Your names would be changed. Your national names would be changed for breaking God's laws. Here's some. Blacks, African American, West Indian. Uh, let you got Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico. This is just Port of Riches. They're one of the poorest nations of the Western Hemisphere. Okay, you have all these names here, where the people were conquered and their names were changed. Give me the next slide. Give me verse. Uh, get to the point. Forty-eight. Verse forty. No, forty-six. I want forty-six. That's what I want. Somebody might say those curses of God ended back during the time of. Uh, the Old Testament. Really? Verse 46. Verse 46. Read 45 and 46. 45. Watch this. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee, and shall pursue thee, and overtake thee, till thou be destroyed. Destroyed as a people. Go ahead. Because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to keep his commandments, commandments. and his statutes, which he commanded thee. Read. And they shall be upon thee for a sign, and for a wonder, and upon thy seed, Forever. So God is telling the children of Israel, if you break my laws, the curses I put on you is going to be on your people forever. From generation to generation to generation. Oh! So that brings us to verse 48 now. So the curses don't end in the Old Testament. They would keep going. Verse 48. Verse 48. Watch this. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies. Uh -oh. Read. Which the Lord shall send against thee uh -huh. in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness, and in want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. Now let's give some illustrations on this verse, okay? 
Go back. This is, descri this is describing serving your enemies for hunger. If you want food, they got EBT system, welfare, public assistance. Go on. Thirst. The, the, throughout every country there was fresh water. But what did America and Europe do? They covered up the fresh water system so that you'd have to buy water from them. Read. I mean, go on. Clothing. That goes into nakedness. Clothing made in Bangladesh, China, France, uh, Italy. People say, well, Puff Daddy got his own clothing company, but he don't make the raw textiles. He has to get it from somewhere else. Go ahead. Next slide. This is the want of all things. Medicine, education, housing, social security. Go ahead. Then it says, and he shall put a yoke of iron upon your neck until he have destroyed you. And that's important because people like to say, everybody went into slavery one time or another. Really? Are you sure about that? So everybody had yokes of iron on their necks? Really? I'd like to read that. I'd like to, I'd like to see the images behind that. Here's an image of a slave during the late 1800s, before the emancipation, having yokes of iron. Here are the etchings. If you see the movies, 12 Years a Slave, Django, they show you these things with yokes of iron upon the slaves' necks. Okay? What are we reading? Never forget, we're reading the Bible. The Bible is identifying the curses that will prove who the children of Israel are in the last days. They will lose their identity. Like, for example, your last name. What is it? Y-W-I-M-I. Where did it come from? Uh, the British. The British. Yes. yes. Our names that we all have it was branded on us. So if, if your name was Washington, you were owned by Washington, that name was branded on you. And if you ran away and you got caught, they said she belongs to the Washington residents. Send her back. That's another Proverbs and Bible words. So now, verse 68 now. Verse 68. Let's get into the key points. And the Lord shall bring thee. Wait, wait, I want them to read along. I'm sorry. Yes, come on. Deuteronomy 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. I want to look at this word Egypt biblically. Because from Israel to Egypt you can walk. You can literally walk. So you don't need ships to go into Egypt. So what does this mean? I'm confused. Because remember the Israelites had just left Egypt. Exodus 20, I believe it is, and verse 2 is described. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 2. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Egypt is synonymous for the house of bondage. The word bondage means slavery or captivity. So now let's go back to this verse and let's read it now. Okay, I got my thought right now. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. And the Lord shall bring you into the house of bondage again. With what? With ships. Hmm, with ships. Now I got to think now. I got to think. What race of people went into bondage again with ships? Now many people like to say, everybody, ha I want to see the archaeology of everybody. I want to see the East Indians, the Chinese, the Arabs in slavery on ships. I'd like to see the history. I want to see the Europeans. When did that happen? You were going to slavery again with ships, cargo slave ships. Go ahead. By the way whereof I spake unto thee. By the way God spake unto us through Moses. Thou shalt see it no more again. Remember, we wanted to see the promised land. But God said, you ain't going to see it no more for breaking my commandments. Go ahead. And there, once you get off the ships, there ye shall be sold. Uh-oh. Sold unto your enemies. Ooh. Not friends. It says enemies. Go ahead. For bondmen, slave men, and bond women, slave women, and no man shall buy you. This means that no man shall buy is an old Quaker word that means save you. No man shall save you. Next slide. Here's an example, historically, of cargo slave ships. You know what always amazed me? The transatlantic slave trade was the worst Holocaust that ever happened in the world. Let's, let, me exact, let me explain what I mean by it. Give me the next verse. Give me the next slide. When I go to various churches and teach, and I ask them, when I say the word Holocaust, what, is, what do you think of? They say, World War II, Nazi Germany, where six million Jewish people were killed. And I've been talking to black ministers, so I said, is that the worst thing that happened on the planet Earth? They said, yes. I said, really? I said, how many black people died during the transatlantic slave trade? They said, oh, about 100 million. I said, okay. I got 100 million people here who died. I got six million people here that died. You mean to tell me 
that the six million outweighs the 100 million? Then he has to pause and think about it. I said, no. Our history is the worst history that, that has occurred. Our Holocaust is the true Holocaust. Here's more etchings of slave ships. Now I'm not saying that six million is a, is a good thing, it's bad. But it, the 100 million, there's no, you can't compare. Okay? Remember it says, and then you shall be sold. Now these are not things we've put together. You can get books on this. Okay, you got men and women being sold. These are advertisements. Here's the cargo slave ships. Okay, now remember what we read in verse 46, that these curses would be upon your seed forever. It would continuously happen. Because some people say it ended with the book of Malachi, and that's not true. It said these curses would be on us forever. Next slide. Next slide. Mm -mm. Let me look. How much time I got? Was that it? Questions. Questions. Okay. Okay. Any questions? Questions. Y'all should have some questions. Okay. Give me the dark ages. So that means I got five more minutes, right? Give me the dark ages. Give me that slide of the dark ages. Go to the beginning. I want the beginning. Click this one right here. Look up this church in court entitled the Varane. It's in Romania. If you notice, there's paintings on the side of the church. This is during the Middle Ages, or what they call the Dark Ages. Next slide. Let's zoom in. Oh, the resurrection. Why did the rulers of Europe paint angels black and the resurrected black? Wow, remember the, 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 the third trump. Read, I mean the next slide. In the same book on the church, you have prophets and apostles. Black men, wow. Next slide. This is King David in his old age. This is close-up of the prophets. Black men, wow! So I mean, you, we're more than Kunta Kinte. Oh, we're more than that. Go ahead. Here's Judgment Day. Here's the hand of God. This is on the side of the church. I ain't gonna tell you what this is right here. Huh. Oh, that'll blow your mind. Let's go to the next slide. <laughs> okay, you got Abraham, Isaac, Jacob with the 12 sons of Israel. Black! Black, six here, six there. Black, wow! John the Baptist. Archangel, this is Mary. That's another angel there. Next slide. Adam and Eve, black, wow. Being kicked out of the garden. These are black. Next slide. This is King, this is in, this is in the same book, this is a different book entitled The Icon. It's put together by Kurt Weitzman. Maybe you can get that book in the school. The Icon by Kurt Weitzman. They show in this church, King David, black, that's the prophet Moses, black. And remember, these were all these things were painted around 1200 A.D., 1300 A.D. Everything after the Renaissance is iconoclasm. Okay, next slide. Archangels, Michael and Uriel. Okay, next slide. I'm gonna get to some key ones. Next slide. Oh, let's get this one. I like this one. This is in a book entitled The Catacombs by James Stevenson. On this book, they show you Samson as a black man. In the same book in the Catacombs of Rome throughout Italy, Rome, they show you all the patriarchs of the Bible black in the tombs. But when you go, one of the brothers went to Italy, they let you go but so far. And you see, he says, hey, everything here is European, it's Caucasian. But when you go further, they stop you and won't let you go further down because the rest wasn't fixed up yet. Funny. In some of his books, they'll say things like this. It'll say, there was a fire in the catacombs, there was a fire in the churches. That's why they appear to be almost black. So if there was a fire, how come the fire didn't burn here? <laughs> what happened here? It's like, wow, lie after lie after lie. Next slide. This is Abraham and Isaac, the sacrifice. Go down, go down, go down. Oh, right here, I like this one. This is the apostles, Peter and Paul, and the prophet David as a young, I mean Daniel, excuse me. Okay, Daniel as a young man, okay. My last scripture? Give me the, cause here they got Peter and Paul, they show Paul black. 
get Acts 21, please? I want to, is it accurate? See, Apostles Peter and Paul. There they look black. They're really dark. So I want to know, what does the Bible say about that? Acts 21. Chapter 21 and verse 37. Go ahead. And, and as Paul was let, excuse me, and as Paul was to be led into the council, he said unto the chief captain, May I speak unto thee, who said, Canst thou speak Greek? So the chief captain said to Paul, Can you speak Greek? Go ahead. Art not thou that Egyptian? Aren't you that Egyptian fellow? Egypt is where? Where's Egypt? Africa. It's in Africa. It's in Africa, go ahead. Oh, oh, by the way, the Egyptians you have there today come from the Ottoman Empire. Okay, the Turks. Those are not the ancient Egyptians. Go ahead. Art not thou that Egyptian which before these days made us an uproar and led us out into the wilderness four thousand men that were murderers? But Paul said, I am a man which am a Jew of Tarsus. Paul said, I'm not Egyptian, I'm not an African, I'm a Jew. That lets you know that Paul looked like this is accurate. Okay, so with that, we're going to wrap it up. If you have questions, y'all can come up. All praise to the Most High. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to share this with me. Okay, all praise. Thank you. Our lecture was cut short due to the fact that some cannot stomach the truth. A Jewish woman ran out of the lecture crying after Bishop Nathaniel stated that our Holocaust was worse than the so-called Jewish people. This resulted in our lecture being cut short by 30 minutes. But don't worry, Israel. The truth never goes out void. Shalom. Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.